The top five most cringe paleoanthropology mistakes of all time. Number five. In 1972, Chris Stringer took his girlfriend to Croatia to study Neanderthal fossils. As Stringer likes to tell the story, he was going through his long hair hippie phase. The museum director in the capital city, with much reluctance, waived the rules. He allowed Stringer to examine the Neanderthal cranium in a private room. The problem was the old Soviet-era glue they had used when the skull was first discovered was a poor adhesive. Stringer applied his cranial measurement devices. The facial bones separated. The entire lower half fell to the table. They panicked. His girlfriend snuck out of the room and rushed to the local marketplace to buy some glue. They managed to glue the facial maxilla back to the cranium. Stringer fessed up to the museum director. According to Stringer, the poor man was appalled. He did manage to conceal any damage that might have been done to the specimen. The Soviet Union collapsed in 1990. Yugoslavia dissolved into several separate nations, including Croatia. This incident has long been forgotten about. Although Stringer, the longtime curator emeritus at the London Museum, still recounts the story with a chuckle in lectures and online interviews. Although unconfirmed, there is one skull that fits the descriptions, the Krapina Neanderthal skull from Croatia. Number four. The very first fossil of pinky bone that led to the discovery of the Denisovan species had been misplaced for years. Russian archaeologists discovered the bone in a cave in Siberia in 2008. The Russians cut the bone in half. Ars Technica 2019, the anthropologists cut it in half and sent one end to Germany and the other end to the University of California, Berkeley. Someone then lost the only photos of the whole bone leaving researchers with no idea what the entire finger looked like. The top half ended up at an institute in France. Fortunately, the two halves were eventually reunited. But till this day, it is still unclear as to why they damaged such a precious fossil and who made the decision to do so. Number three. In 1888, workers in a quarry near Barcelona, Spain, uncovered a human jawbone. A local expert was called in to remove the fossil from the rock. Senor Per Arcias was a highly respected pharmacist in town. He was also an amateur naturalist and cave explorer. He conducted an extensive investigation on the specimen and wrote up a detailed paper with notes and measurements. During a photographing session of the fossil, the specimen was dropped on the floor. It is unclear whether the pharmacist dropped it, a lab assistant, or the photographer. Years later, the local museum in possession of the jawbone called in an investigative team. The investigators found that dropping the jawbone on the floor caused no damage. They also declared the specimen to be a Neanderthal. For decades thereafter, paleoanthropologists classified the jawbone as a Neanderthal because of the missing chin. In 2006, Chris Stringer's close friend and colleague Rainer Grun was called in to conduct ESR. Grun et al. got a date of 66,000 years ago, give or take 7,000 years. 
that means the fossil could be as old as 73,000 years ago. In 2023, a team from Binghamton University in New York did 3D geomorphometrics analysis of the jawbone. Their conclusion... The results of the present study have demonstrated clearly that Banyolas does not show any derived Neanderthal features. This calls into question previous assessments of Banyolas as representing a Neanderthal. This now makes the Banyolas jawbone the oldest Homo sapien fossil in Western Europe at potentially 73,000 years ago. A careless wedding photographer or young intern dropped the Banyolas jawbone on the floor, damaging the crucial chin area. As a result, for over 100 years, paleoanthropologists were not aware that Homo sapiens were in Western Europe as early as 73,000 years ago. Number 2. KNMER3733 is the first Homo ergaster, Afroerectus, skull ever found. It was discovered by Richard Leakey's team in 1976 at Lake Turkana. The cranium had to be assembled from dozens of fragments. Leakey's team leader, Alan Walker, was assigned the task of putting it all together. The problem was the cranium was thick and heavy. The facial fragments were thin and fragile. Walker told his boss he needed to lessen the weight of the cranium, and the only way to do that would be to split it in two. Leakey was horrified, but agreed to the procedure. He couldn't bear to watch, so he fled back to Nairobi. Kamoya Kamu and Tim White were in the room at the outdoor laboratory. Walker took out a hammer and chisel. The cranium held strong. White snark, quote, I think you need to hit it harder, end quote. On the 12th strike, the cranium split apart by the seams. He managed to glue the face bones to the cranium. They were able to get a full picture of the specimen and declare it phylogenetically. Number one. The Piltdown Man hoax is the reigning champion of all time paleoanthropology scandals. For nearly 40 years, the London Anthropology Establishment believed they had a cranium skull cap and jawbone of the long sought after missing link. In reality, what they really had was a 600 year old human skull cap robbed from a medieval gravesite and an orangutan jawbone. Both were stained brown to make them look old. The anthropology establishment figures were scammed by a clever hoaxer. To this day, the identity of the scam artist is a mystery. Both of the main suspects, amateur fossil hunters Martin Hinton and Charles Dawson, did hold grudges against museum authorities. Stringer released a paper on Piltdown in 2014. He called the event a complex forgery. He concluded the ambitious Charles Dawson was the likely culprit. Coming soon. Top five politically incorrect events in paleoanthropology. Did a top paleoanthropology historical figure really dress up in blackface? Paleoanthropologists collecting shrunken heads in South Africa? Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notifications button.